Benton? Here. Cheney? Baggione? Here. Hines? Here. Holtzek? Here. Here. Minuta? Here. O'Donnell? Here. Briskevich? Here. Sassy? Here. Sierra? Here. Stenanga? Here. Sutherland? Here. Totel? Here. Tui? Here. Vero? Here. Brescia? 20 eyes, one absent. Okay, let's try to do the students if we can quickly. Um, you have to hold your speaker on, maybe. We're we'll having technical difficulties. Or maybe Lee. Yes. Hold the speakers on, please. Are they ready? Um, 
um, but their latest initiative is something called the Thunderbolts, which is a Special Olympics team uh, for uh, children on the spectrum. So um, without further ado, I am going to introduce Lisa Correo, uh, who is also uh, with her as a number of guests from the SUNY Orange Bridges program. said our Thunderbolt special athletic teams are always seeking new members and we help uh, young adults and children participate in track and field, swimming, basketball, and bowling. Those of us on the committee are volunteer coaches. I'm very proud to be Coach Stacy in the pool. So if you know any athletes locally that are willing to join our team, please contact us. Lisa and her presentation with the students will be ready in just one moment. Thank you.
running over. My name is Samantha Monteiro. At Bridges, I have been able to take auto classes in my area of interest. Dear, I have joined the Criminal Justice Club on campus. I also like being able to spend one on one time with my peer mentor, Jay. My name is Marty Anderson. I feel like having access to higher education will help me write a resume and do a cover letter along with practicing a mock interview to help me get a full time job. Hi, my name is Joseph Franklin. I, my interest is math. I love partying in my algebra course on campus. I enjoy campus activities. Go, 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 go. Hello, my name is Sarah Thompson. Coming to the Bridges program and taking vocational classes allows me to learn skills such as communication, networking, growth mindset, and perseverance. These skills will help me learn how to get a better job. My name is Bryn Sutter. Some classes I have taken at Bridges are social skills, executive functioning, and consumer math. I have learned a lot in these classes. When I first started the program, I needed my parents to drive me to school because I lacked the confidence and familiarity of the area to drive myself. I have since begun driving myself to school, something that seemed impossible to me a year and a half ago. My name is Nicholas Hassan. I am a first year student in the British program. I have taken a credit course in English and using very supports the college has to offer. The British program has, uh, supports my goal of pursuing academics and vocational opportunities. Hello, my name is Kayla ross -Nagel. As a SUNY Bridges student, I feel having access to higher education allows me to increase my independence, explore my interests, and to learn new skills. I love, I love the Bridges program because it gives me a chance to meet new people and have a college experience. My name is Joanna Formasano. I feel having access to higher education allows me to increase my independence and important life skills. I am now cooking and doing laundry at home. I hope to continue to learn new skills so I'm able to live independently someday. Right. You can move that mic down. Yeah. Oh, thanks. <laughs> My name is. Oh, God. That's <laughs> loud. My name is Zach Lerman. I feel having access to higher education through the Bridges program that has allowed me to experience life on the college campus. I have joined the math club. I am able to participate in all of the activities that the college has to offer as well as exploring some of my interests. Thank you.
quick things for the legislature on uh, this, this certificate. In the next few months, you will be getting a presentation from the new Parks Commissioner, uh, Jim Brooks, on how we can change our parks, the, the, the resources that we have to make them more accommodating to people with disabilities, whether people on the spectrum or people with physical disabilities. We did that last year with Sally's Dream, and I think it should be our priority uh, as a county to change all our, our different infrastructures to make them more accommodating. The second thing is, and this might be more towards Chairman Brescia, but you as a legislature confirm all the people on the IDA. When new businesses get located to Orange County and get incentives, whether they're from a uh, tax incentive or different types of sales tax breaks or whatever, from the federal state governments or through our IDA, we should be requiring those businesses to hire more people that, are, that have disabilities as well as veterans. Both of those. make up the biggest brackets of people that are unemployed in our society today. So if we are going to have a company come here and they're going to get a break, we should get something in return for that. So uh, I, I congratulate everybody. I know a lot of the families here. Um, and I, this was tremendous bravery from these young men and women. We did a phenomenal job, as you can see, with a standing ovation from the legislature. And uh, I'm happy to be here with you. Chairman? Thank you, County Exec. I just want to present, uh, gives me great deal of pleasure on behalf of the legislature sent you the Autism Awareness Month in Orange County Proclamation, and I'll read the first whereas and the last now therefore be resolved. Whereas autism is reported to be the fastest growing and third most common developmental disability in the United States, affecting thousands of people in New York State. Um, and now therefore be resolved that I, Stephen M. Newhouse, Orange County Executive, and L. Stephen Gresham Chairman, do hereby proclaim to the April 2018 is Autism Awareness Month. Debbie, Stacy. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for all you do to make autism awareness a, a reality. Um, Ms. Sutter, I think I graduated with your father's ready your father. I remember reading the article about you in the paper not too long ago. It was very impressive.
ensure that funding would not cease and services would not stop. Um, you know, people don't get raped from nine, just nine to five. The idea that we had to consider cutting back services was not an option. Um, so we're really very fortunate, you know, to have the support of the county exec and the Orange County Legislature. And, uh, you know, I think that's very important to say. So I'm going to call up to the podium, uh, King Mistala. My name is Kim Nostala. I'm the Senior Sexual Assault Designer for the Orange County Rape Crisis of NHA in Orange County. Um, I want to thank the Orange County Legislature, the Orange County Executive, uh, District Attorney's Office. Um, what we do is very important right now. I do a lot of clinical work uh, overseeing our nurses, and this is a very uh, important program to help the community. Um, where it's more out in the open now, a lot more people are aware of women's health, and even this also has to deal with men's health. Um, we work in the community, we try to educate regarding prevention, and, um, and it helps students. So if you know anybody, or you yourself have had a problem such as this, then uh, you can always give our number a call. It is 1-800-832-1200, I have to plug it. It is very important for college students and high school students. Um, life now is not how, it is better than I imagined it 10, 20 years ago. Um, I know we have a lot of negative things in the news, but uh, just being here this morning, my first time here, and um, I felt like somebody was cutting onions. It was, I was crying back there, and I just put on makeup, so I was pretty upset about it. Um, life is beautiful, and we can help each other out as human beings. Um, this program, um, if you need to call about anything, there's uh, the help client calls for uh, housing as well and other things. So um, if you have any questions, you can always give us a call. Um, I really do want to thank the legislature again and Stephen Um This is usually an uncomfortable topic for people to talk about. Uh, Debbie, you nailed it. Uh, you know, it's, it's crazy that Albany and Washington are still consumed with paralysis. And some of the holdover legislators, you guys backed me up three years ago when Debbie referred to the rape crisis center in Orange County was going to be close. But all Albany cut funding for Orange County. We had to fill in the gap. I know the new legislators are going to back this up 100% when we have those problems too. But it's unconscionable where the priorities are in these two institutions that are running this, this country and the state. And uh, we have close to 300 victims a year of sexual assault in this county. It goes up and down. That's a lot of people. So this country still has a long way to go on how we respect and treat each other. Uh, but this is really a critical thing that these young ladies do and the people that the services they do. They're not just helping the victims. They also counsel and help law enforcement on how to respond and how to handle um, victims of assault or who call survivors. Uh, they also educate uh, first responders like EMTs, EMS, on how to handle people that have been this traumatic experience. So it's an uncomfortable topic. We're all adults here, and we talk about this freely because it's the only way we're going to get things done. So I appreciate you guys being here. Mr. Chairman? Thank you again, Debbie. Um, I'll just read the first. Again, whereas sexual assault and rape occurs in one in four girls and one in six boys before their 18th birthday, and sexual assault and rape are the most underreported crimes. And now, therefore, it be resolved that I, Stephen M. Newhouse, Orange County Executive, and L. Stephen Brush, Chairman, will be appealed by the claim in the month of April as Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Thank you for all you do. This is another issue that is very, very close to home with me, which I don't want to talk about. But uh, thank you, and we're 100% fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. These proclamations are displayed proudly in the main lobby of our office as testament to you know, how proud we are of the work that we do but the support that we get from Orange County. So I thank you.
And next up is prevention of animal, animal cruelty, Susan Barron. Uh, our Susan Barron, the different Susan Barron. Michelle Little, Floyd D'Angelo, and DA David Googler and Sheriff Garland Du Bois. Respect 
and prevention of animal cruelty. Now, therefore, be resolved, I, Stephen Rushner, um, and uh, Stephen Newhouse, prevention of animal cruelty month throughout Orange County, call on all Orange County residents to treat any and all with kindness, consideration, and respect, and to report the abuses, neglect, and cruelty of all animals to law enforcement agencies, their local humane society, or to the Warwick Valley Humane Society, honored during this month of April 2018.
patient supervisors, Kathy Fox and Jeannie Work. We have our crime victims uh, memorial coming up. Uh, I will tell you that our parks department, I'm just highlighting them because I spent some time with Jim yesterday about some of the things we're doing. Our parks employees have been diligently working on making a bench that will be unveiled at the uh, crime victims ceremony in uh, the next week or so. So, uh, there. Well, thank uh, the legislature and the county executive of Newhouse for putting this on the schedule today. And um, you heard from the Mental Health Association, the Red Crisis Hotline. I'm not sure uh, people are aware that our information department houses one of the largest crime victims assistance programs in upstate New York. We foot currently have five full-time uh, crime victim assistance counselors and one part-time. I'm uh, happy to announce that this week I was notified that myself and Jody Lebrinsky from the grants unit had applied for a grant and they were awarded another additional $500,000 of funding uh, to provide long-term case management services to crime victims. Uh, as a law enforcement official, what you would know is that while we continually focus on the offenders, uh, there are people who are harmed. And if your child, your husband, your wife, your brother, your sister has been killed by a drug driver, if you are the family of people who suffered uh, from the victim of sexual assault, uh, the, their lives have been changed irrevocably. Every morning they wake up, for about two seconds they feel alone, and it all starts all over again. We've immersed ourselves into that culture, and to have that under the uh, probation department has enabled that philosophy to trickle out to the officers. Supervisor Gene Corcoran runs this program. Prior to being promoted to director, I ran the program. So it's something that's extremely important to the county. We provide over 15,000 crime victim services. Last year we did almost 1,000 orders of protection applications and family court for victims of domestic violence. Uh, so when we look at this, uh, it's really something that's usually left out of the conversation. But the way that I view this is the victims are the primary users of the criminal justice system. And we're going to try to do everything that we can to ensure uh, that they um, get the, their uh, needs met and that we can continue on and focus on that through the process. So again, thank you very much. Again, I'd like to present this certificate, um, proclamation rather, and uh, thanks to all you guys do. It's an amazing job. Derek and Kathy and Jean and your whole department. Um, Orange County Crime Victims Rights Week throughout Orange County and honors crime victims and those who serve them during this week and throughout the year. And we stand united in our commitment to victim justice as individuals, communities as a nation. Uh, signed on behalf of myself and Steve Newhouse. March 2018 as Myeloma Action Month 
and convey these sentiments to every citizen of Orange County. Okay, thank you for reading that. Uh, you did a great job. Uh, I know it says March, uh, this is April. Uh, we're a little bit late on this one. I didn't find out about it until uh, we were in March after our March session. Um, but I did have the opportunity to go to their uh, support group meeting in March and present the uh, proclamation to them and uh, hear more about the organization. I want to thank Adina, who uh, is coordinator of the local support group. Um, she's also a myeloma. Myeloma. You think I'd be able to say that? Say that by now, but uh, patient. And um, she's done uh, great work with the support group. And I wanted to bring her anyway just to help raise awareness. I know it's not a lot of people don't know about it. It is a somewhat rare form of cancer. However, it is the second most common uh, blood cancer. So uh, again, thank you for being here. And next year, we'll do it in March. Hello, I wanted to thank everyone in the legislature and in Orange County for supporting our group with this proclamation and helping to raise awareness. I was diagnosed with multiple myeloma Three years ago, um, at the age of 40, it does occur in younger people, even though it's more common in older people. And um, it is an incurable cancer. That means I will have it for the rest of my life. More than uh, half of patients diagnosed with myeloma don't live five years. So it is a very serious uh, disease. I have to be in constant treatment. Don't let my healthy looks fool you. Um, and so I, I really wanted to thank all of you for helping to raise awareness this blood cancer. Thank you.
So we can, I would like to see us debate that and, and vote on it in the affirmative. Um, and the county exec, I'm told, is going to have a press conference on Monday, I believe at 11 o'clock with Riverkeeper, uh, to speak about the resolution as well. So uh, if there are any problems, uh, I'd like to move the CPD resolution up to now. What, what number is the CPD? Number one, anyway. So, um, is there any objections to that? Yes, let's say the name stops. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm, I don't often disagree with the chairman, but I just find it highly irregular, uh, number one, doing this, number two, this is a very important resolution for the people of Orange County, and I think, I think, my opinion is I'd like to hear the people's voice. Yes. Thank you, I think it's on now. Perfect. Uh, I would actually second that. I think that this is a highly important uh, resolution, and I would really like to know if there's anything that we could be doing to amend this resolution, and that public comment would definitely assist in that. Thank you. Okay, any other discussion? Do we want to vote on the, uh, we'll vote on the moving, moving it first. Do I have to abstain from this vote? Okay. All right, well, I do, because it's a ruling in the chairman. Uh, roll call. A yes vote is to um, vote for it now before, I mean, vote for it after public participation. A no vote is to vote for it after. <laughs> okay, so, so the ruling would be uh, you, you would vote yes to override the chairman uh, or no, not to override him. Okay. Okay, roll call. Benelli? No. Padu? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagasakis? Yes. Benton? No. Cheney? Yes. Baggio? No. Hines? Yes. Pulsek? Yes. Guhan? Yes. Renuda? No. Adamo? Yes. Ruskevich? No. Sassy? Yes. Sierra? Sananga? Sutherland? Total? Chewy? Bureau? Gresham? 14 eyes, 6 no's. Okay, so we're going to hear public participation. Let's, okay. Uh, but we are going to stay within the three limit, three minute limit, okay? We're punch for time today. Lawrence Rossini on the Beaver Dam Lake District Board, agenda item four. Uh, 
with an advertised statement that said it will not exceed one and a half million dollars. That was 2006. Uh, that was going to be offset by a one million dollar uh, environmental grant that, uh, with the state grant that came from the 1996 environmental bond issue. Uh, 2011, those costs went to uh, two and a half million for construction, 2.7 for total project. 2014, it went to 2.9 million for construction, 3.7 million total project. Uh, here we are, we opened our bids uh, finally uh, at, uh, in March. Construction costs, uh, the bids range from about $4 million to $6 and three quarter million million for construction. And the uh, low bidder just a, a hair over $4 million and the total projected construction cost, uh, total project cost of $4.6 million. So, again, mixed emotions because we started with a project that was around a million dollars and it's you know, over four times that at this point. Our environmental bond issue grant is in jeopardy if this project does not get completed by the end of this year. I'm here to urge you to do whatever is necessary to motivate all of the various departments involved uh, in Orange County to make this happen. It would be extremely unfortunate Thank you, Larry. tax paper and embarrassing for the county. Three minute time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Scott Martens, agenda item number one. Three minutes, I'll remind everybody. I'm going to cut you up three, so. Yes, I'm going to try to talk faster this time. Okay, <laughs> speak to the issue. I'm going to this one like last time. I understand, Scott. I just thought you guys were going to uh, my name is Scott Martinez. I'm a resident of the town of Vinicing, a uh, lifelong resident of Orange County. I grew up um, in Middletown, the city of Middletown. Um, uh, thank you guys very much for giving me the opportunity to speak. I'm here today representing my children, my wife um, and my mother, along with all the other very, very, very concerned residents um, out in Vinicing and Rueyanza um, and beyond about this CPB project. Um, First, I want to give you guys an update, like I have been doing monthly, on the uh, CPD and pipeline projects. Um, as you know, CPD is back up now and testing, commissioning their corrupt facility on low sulfur diesel fuel, which is the dirtiest possible fuel they could possibly be using right now. They are not permitted to do this. They are permitted to burn a relatively small amount of diesel fuel, but only as a backup fuel for electricity generation. That is not what they're doing right now. They're not specifically permitted to be burning this diesel fuel for the commissioning phase. And this is just a yet another example of CPD's uncompromising, unneighborly, and downright egregious behavior. The pipeline, which again, this legislature resolved against supporting the state DEC, and their denial of a very critical water quality permit is, uh, is rapidly progressing uh, despite the bad weather, which is very disconcerting, uh, especially considering there are certain pipeline safety proficiency standards that simply cannot be met in cold and inclement weather. In fact, we have a professional coding inspector that has indicated to us that there is no way the proper coding inspections could have been done or conducted um, in, in the current circumstances. Uh, this pipe was staged, welded, and just dropped into the ground without the proper and necess uh, necessary procedures. They're cutting corners in the interest of speed and at the expense of our environmental quality, and this is unacceptable. On the resolution, I support your efforts, um, and I urge the legislatures and county executive especially to go to Albany personally and lobby further um, uh, for, this for this legislation and action by the governor and demand it be acted on quickly. Time is of the essence. Please, please, I beg you, like I have many times, almost on my knees, please take this action. It's not enough to just send this up. I'm gonna give you guys the benefit of the doubt that you're not just kicking the can down the street here, that you truly want to make a difference here in light of this guilty uh, per Coco verdict. So please, I, I ask that you do this in the interest of the protection of the people that you are in the charge to represent. And I just want to, uh, a couple of quotes that I tried to get out last time. Um, uh, th these are really important. Uh, Theodore Roosevelt, here is your country. Cherish these natural wonders. Cherish the natural resources. Cherish the history and romance as sacred heritage for your 
children, your children's children. Do not let selfish men or greedy interests skin your country of its beauty, its riches, or its romance. And Mahatma Gandhi, the earth provides one of the good things that every man got. We want to hear more from the dying every man. man. But thank you. Thank you. Uh, next speaker will be Kiro. direction. 
the power of your office to make sure that all of our state officials get this bill to a vote on the floor. This is the next lesson for all you young kids. Sponsoring a bill without fighting for it is meaningless. We need to see public pressure on all our state legislators to move this to a vote before the session ends in June. We cannot live with this plan for a whole year. And Mr. Newhouse, while I support this resolution, one action does not preclude other actions. So in, ad in addition, we ask that you send a letter to Governor Cuomo, to the DEC Commissioner, to the State Attorney General, and to the New York State Department of Health Commissioner Howard Zucker, demanding that the plan be shut down. Uh, just last, uh, last sentence, the, the plan be shut down using the state's police powers based on the health impact identified by residents, and we ask that you don't. You know, that's a long sentence. Barbara Kitty, next speaker. Don't take Keep no me. Barbara please. Kitty, next speaker, please. Thank you. 
you very much. I urge you to pass this part, this resolution. Thank you, Andy. Uh, next speaker, last speaker of the order is Deborah Slattery regarding CPD, agenda item one. Hi, my name is Deborah Slattery. I'm a resident of Slate Hill. Um, I'm here this morning to talk about the CPD fat gas powder plan. Some of us have been trying to stop this since the moment we found out about it. Unfortunately, not only were her voices unheard, they were shut down by our town boards. As time has gone on, we learn more and more about fat gas and its infrastructure causes. The scientists have been scrambling for years because of the Halliburton loophole, but now we know for sure. We all do it. We can't deny it. This county is in a major crisis, and it will only get worse as soon as those fat gas pipelines are hooked up. We had an expert testify last night. I think uh, Scott Martinez told you about this. It's true. That's the way he does for a living. He's a pipeline inspector. They went into the ground on COVID. On COVID. This is, this is, this is major. Okay, the adverse health effects have already started. The frat gas pipeline isn't even connected yet. And as we already know, it's going to be drastically worse. Even when you can't see the plumes, they are there. Suddenly into this valley where our families live and many of us have our livelihoods, our children play and our animals roam about. We are all subject to this toxic air and water, regardless of whether or not you live in Orm uh, and way beyond them. It's true, the land that they built it on is destroyed. It will never be able to recover what we've already lost. But if this continues, we're going to lose a lot more, including lives. I watched my brother-in-law, 62 years old, die of AML, acute myeloid leukemia, from benzene exposure. That's coming out of those smokestacks. Nine months later, his boss died from the same exact acute myeloid leukemia. This is, this is true. And we already know the facts of what's coming out. So I urge all of you, not just to pass this, but keep pressure on the offices above you, because this needs to stop. We can't wait a year. This has to be stopped before the fact gas pipelines are hooked up, because that's when it's really going to get bad. Thank you very much. Thank you. Majority Leader Benelli. Majority Leader Benelli. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Opposed? Carried. Legislator, or Majority Leader Benelli again. Okay, I also move to go collectively on items number 18 through 23 and items 27 through 31. Second. Okay, if there are no objections, that'll be done. Uh, are there any referrals, concessions, or withdrawals? Legislator Sassy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a uh, request for a consent resolution, please. To place in the agenda resolution of the Orange County Legislature urging the New York State Legislature and Governor of the State of New York to enact Senate Bill Number 2761 and Assembly Bill Number 3398, Lurie's Law. Is there a second? Okay. okay, if there are no objections, that'll be 1 A. And uh, Legislator Fagion. Thank you, Chairman. I request that item number five on the agenda. Bond resolution authorizing the preparation of surveys, preliminary and detailed plans, specifications, and estimates necessary for a communications link between various school districts within Orange County and the Emergency Services Center, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is $250,000, appropriating said amount therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $250,000 bonds of the county pay of the cost thereof be withdrawn. Okay, if there are no, no objections, that will be withdrawn. Uh, Legislator Penn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I request that item number 14 on the agenda, resolution making the supplemental appropriation to the 2018 Orange County budget for the Orange County Department of Public Works, pursuant to section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter, 
for increase and improvements of the facilities of Beaver Dam Lake Protection and Rehabilitation District in the amount of nine hundred thousand dollars uh, be tabled for one month. Okay. Okay. If there are no objections. Yes, uh, let's hear it. Yeah, I just have a question for council on that. We heard Mr. Rossini talk about the uh, timeliness of the project based on the million dollar grant from the state of New York. I hate to think the way this would, would matter. So I'd like council to please explain why this has to go back and if you think it's in fact necessary. I guess, uh, thank you, Mr. Hines. Uh, the reason why we're going to table it for one month is there is an issue, uh, the, the cost of the project would increase from the original uh, public hearing notice that was given to the public and members to that community. So the cost of the project will go up and uh, we'd like to hear public comment about that. Uh, we haven't heard from the state controller's office whether in fact we are required to, uh, but uh, the, the law seems to be vague on that. We've consulted with the county attorney attorney's office on that. So we're uh, scheduling uh, the public hearing to be held, I believe, April 24th. And thereafter, this will come back onto the agenda for the May, uh, I believe, May 3rd uh, legislative session. Uh, and uh, we checked with Commissioner Denegda, our Commissioner of Public Works, and he said that time frame works for him as well. My concern would be, and I think a better remedy would be to let it go forward, and if uh, the controller comes back with an opinion to the contrary, that uh, we then have to do it over again next month. But to delay it on speculation of what the controller's opinion would be, I, I think could be detrimental to the project. So I would object to the withdrawal. And, uh, there's only three of us that represent the Beaver Dam community here in, in this uh, legislature. And it, uh, we heard from Mr. Rossini, we have uh, the ability of having the Beaver Dam Lake Board uh, which is something we don't have with other issues uh, such as the sewer district and things like that. So when the Beaver Dam Lake Board comes to us and says, please get this done, don't delay the project, and the next thing we do after he speaks is try to further delay this project, I can see him jumping up and down over there. Uh, I object, let's go forward with this. If council has to legally withdraw it, then obviously we have no choice. But the controller has not rendered an opinion based on what you're telling me. It's uh, So I think pulling it is premature, let's go forward with it. If we have to deal with it legally uh, at a later date, we can do that in, in conjunction with the Beaver Dam Lake community. So I would object to the withdrawal. May I ask a question, uh, Mr. Hines? Sure. Uh, did you want to not hold the public hearing or public comment on the increase of the project? Well, I don't think there's anyone in the community that doesn't know that I, uh, Larry sends emails to everybody. I'm sure Larry would be happy to address this if the chair would allow him. The community knows this, the value of this. They know that their lake is going to be drawn down this summer, and they don't want to get into two summers of having no lake. So to delay this is a significant blow to the community. And, and I don't know, and, and that grant, that million dollar grant, and Mr. Denega will tell you this because he told me, is has to be used by the end of 2018. The latest project could be a million dollars out of the taxpayers of the Beaver Dam Lake community, not anybody else in Orange County, just those that live in that community, based on the prorated formula of if you have lake rights, lake view, or, or uh, uh, lake frontage. So it's a, a million dollar question here, and I'd like to see it go forward. Uh, if, the, if the public hearing is determined to be necessary, then, then we can schedule it. But, but this resolution before us should go forward. Council, can uh, legislator Penn withdraw his motion or do you see a problem with that? Yeah, but Legislator Benton, you were going to withdraw before the vote on the Correct. But you were willing to withdraw your motion entirely before that even comes to a vote, correct? Is your seconder? We'll withdraw the second, so then we don't have to table it. We'll just withdraw it. Or, or we'll send it back to committee for one, or we, we'll vote on it, I'm sorry. You guys are getting me all confused today, I'm telling you. Withdraw the withdrawal, we're gonna vote on it. Correct. Do you still, but do you want to withdraw the uh, public hearing? No, this. Second the public hearing. Well, I, I, I'm just wondering, it, it would seem as if it renders the next, uh, that other resolution moot. Okay. All right, so 
it back on the agenda. Let's go to let's go to one and yes, a majority leader Ben. Which is the first time that's happened, by the way. So, resolution number one. Okay, A, B, and C receive and file. Resolution one. Legislature Benelli and Chief. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature urging the New York State Legislature and Governor of the State of New York to enact legislation to create a presumption of invalidity for the project in which direct criminal conduct by public officials occurred and for which permits were issued. Such state legislation must be retroactive and apply to the CPD project in Orange County. Okay, okay Legislator Henry Stavis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So we, uh, we heard some very good speakers, one of which said that they didn't blame CPD. Uh, first of all, before I get into this, I'm going to be in full support of this uh, measure that we're taking here today. That speaker said he didn't blame CPD because they all they did was take advantage of the system that is in place. And he is 100% correct. The system in place is what we have up in Albany. The laws that we have in Albany are what some consider uh, the worst pay-to-play state in the union. Um, but CPD not content with making over 50,000 in political contributions, which were not illegal because the play-to-play -play system that we have in New York State allows them to do that. Not content with those huge contributions, they went further. They went with thousands, tens of thousands of bribes. They went further than that. They got no-show jobs for relatives. So CPB should be known as corrupt, permitting venture and corrupt permitting venture should be stopped in Orange County. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, thank you. Okay, before, before we go to the second speaker, I'd invite the uh, legislators that have to leave to leave. Uh, the students are leaving now. It's 11.30. Yeah. And uh, I know, Rob, you have to go because you're handling the mock session. Do uh, you want to get, are we going to have time for 1A? All right, let's do 1A. Let's move 1A up to one. Oh, First item. Oh, Rob, no, we can't. We're already on one. I'm sorry. Okay, you're going to stay that long if you can? Okay. Uh, Jim O'Donnell. I will say we might not be able to make the lunch. I think we're going to continue session. If we go over 1230, uh, the might not be able to make the lunch. So thank you for coming, young men and young ladies. Um, it was very informative, and I hope you learned a lot today. Okay, Legislator Jim O'Donnell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I also will be uh, supporting this resolution, but I have another concern. The county exec on uh, two separate occasions sent uh, letters to Albany uh, requesting information on the results of the testing that's been done at uh, CPB, uh, health concerns. And uh, neither one of those letters were answered. That, in uh, short, is disgraceful. That a government agency submitting a request to uh, the state government and being ignored is disgraceful. As a result of that last night at the Republican caucus, it was unanimously decided that we will send a FOIL request to the DEC and to the Department of Health requesting a copy of all health-related testing that's been done today at the CPV facility, as well as the dates of any future testing. Again, uh, it will be regarding air quality, soil, and dust particles. Uh, the fact that we have to go to this uh, resort of foiling a uh, state agency as a governmental body is, again, nothing short of disgraceful. Thank you. Thank you. If there are no objections, we'll do that as a legislative body with the FOIL requests. Okay, Legislator Fagione and Legislator Paduca. 
Thank you, Chairman. Okay, my microphone's working out. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, just for an update, uh, as this was uh, uh, as this was voted on in the Rules Committee, for those that were in attendance of the Rules Committee, there was um, the document was, and I'd like to call it a living document during the committee process. And upon the revisions that were made, and I compliment our council as well as the county attorney upon the revisions uh, that were made in committee and as presented as forward. My original vote of no in committee was until I read the complete body here today. I would like to let my committee members know, as well as the whole body, that my vote will be yes today, and I support this resolution. I ask for everyone to do the same. Thank you. Okay, my name is Leader Badu. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first, I'd just like to mention that I abstained from CPV voting prior. Uh, I reached out to the Ethics Board. I've got a determination that it's fine for me to vote. So I have voted in the past, and I just wanted to make mention today that, like I did in committee, in regards to the resolution itself, um, I think there's some issues with it still, uh, that some things like giving, uh, let me see what it says, such state legislation must be retroactive and apply to CPV project in Orange County. That may be considered unconstitutional. And also that the Senate and the Assembly don't have the authority to revoke permits. Um, my opinion would be to, for us to strengthen, maybe add a second resolution, one directly to the governor who has control over all the authorities. And actually, the resolve that I got put in that committee, which is the third resolve, which reads that uh, that this legislation requests the governor to direct all permit issuing state departments, commissions, boards, or agencies to review all permits issued for the CPV project in the town of Wayrianda, Orange County, and take any or all appropriate actions in relationship thereto, including the notification, suspension, conditioning, or revocation thereof. He has the only authority to do that. I'm, with my concern over uh, the resolution as we are reading it, with the retroactive, which may be unconstitutional, uh, I'm going to support the resolution. I would just suggest that maybe we break out one specifically to the governor, leave the same two whereases, and the last result, so that it's directly to the governor to make a decision as to what to do in regards to the permits, and still ask the legislature to convene and, and discuss the possible uh, a resolution to make the inval invalidity of any criminal conduct uh, be in the future. That's my opinion. I'm, I'm going to support it today anyway. I just think it would be much more stronger uh, if we separated it out, one specifically to the governor, asking him to tell the agencies, and one asking the legislature to do their business in regards to passing laws. Legislature to tell. Yeah, after that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I agree with Senator McDuke that it is potentially unconstitutional for the Assembly of the Senate to revoke a issue permit. It's a regulatory issue that only the governor has authority over. So I'm wondering why we would pass a resolution that potentially will not have any good impact. Um, I believe that we should have two separate resolutions, one for future as far as legality goes, as far as asking them to pass a, a law that says if a permit is issued and there is corruption found and there are charges that, yes, they should, the same way they have done with ethics laws in the past. And then for this specific issue, we change this resolution to governor only, who is the person who can have these permits revoked. And it needs to go to the governor. This is the governor's problem. This isn't the governor's hands. Thank you. I would think that we're changing. Go ahead. Uh, first of all, the, the resolution doesn't ask for the New York State Legislature to revoke the uh, permits. What it does, it changes the law as far as what the, the presumption of validity on the uh, on, on, on these projects when there's criminal activity. Um, the, the burden of proof on actions uh, are, is established in the penal law, in New York State criminal laws, and other regulatory uh, agency laws. Um, and um, so the, the authority to shift the burden of a validity for a project falls within the New York State legislature. Ultimately, they make the laws in the state of New York, 
and they created uh, the environmental conservation laws as well as the Department of Environmental Conservation. Uh, so basically the buck starts with them and stops with them. And so they do have the authority uh, to uh, create this presumption of invalidity, and that's what we're asking them to do, and to make it retroactive. Um, we've, they're the ones that ultimately created the Department of Environmental Conser uh, Conservation, and they established the laws for them. So you see no problem with the resolution? I do not. You do not? Okay, that's good enough for me. Yes, Legislator Tatel, and then Legislator Sotomayor. The problem is not about them creating a law for the future. The problem is us asking them to retroactively create the law to apply to CPB. That's why I am saying that we need to take this and we need to put it where it belongs with the governor and then also ask the legislature from now forward to pass a law. Yes, they are the governing body. The book stops there, but they cannot retroactively revoke a permit. That's something that if you look at the Constitution the way I was reading through when I was researching this. I don't believe, I'm not a lawyer, but I don't believe that we should be able to do that. I'm saying that I want to put something forward that's going to have the most direct impact to get these permits removed from CPD, and to me, that is at the governor's level. Legislator Sullivan, then Benton. Thank you, Chairman. I just wanted to say that when I um, had the, the pleasure of meeting constituents and waving on to going door to door, uh, there wasn't one house that I went to that CPV wasn't a, a tremendous concern. And I had promised each and every one of them that moving forward, if I was elected, that I would do what I could do to make sure that this, what happened to it, the way uh, things went down behind closed doors and whatnot, that it didn't happen again. So I will absolutely be voting for this. Thank you, Legislator Benton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, too, have concerns whether it says retroactively. I mean, everyone learns in high school about ex post facto laws and things like that, so I'm a little hesitant uh, for that reason. I also think the term should not be necessarily be revoked, but be immediately suspended. Um, again, I'm not, not sure who has uh, authority to do what, but I think suspension is probably more uh, my way of doing uh, saying it, but I will be voting for this today. Um, I want to be, also be critical of the DEC and their testing. I think the smokestack, the testing should be right at the smokestack. Climb up there, hold it on a pole, get your sample so that we know what completely comes out of those stacks. Um, you know, there's a catchphrase in you know the world: the solution to pollution is pollution. And all that does is sampling in neighborhoods. Yeah, you get a good idea of what is in someone's neighborhood. Uh, but I think you need to know what's coming out first so that you can see what the effect is as it you know, tries to be dissolved into the atmosphere. I particularly am an observer of what the testing and what the result is under the uh, operation under the uh, low, quote, low sulfur diesel fuel. Uh, on President's Day weekend, I don't know what you would call it atmospherically, some sort of inversion or something or other. But I was told by residents of Middletown, where I work, that for the whole weekend, by Orange County Community College, the whole hill, I mean, you were choking. Uh, particularly Monday morning, I had to work that holiday. And I looked out the window, and I'm asking and yelling downstairs, hey, is our recycling facility on fire? Is there a fire at our junkyard or scrapyard or the neighboring scrapyard? No, not at all. Walked outside. And again, you were gagging from this diesel diesel smoke. So I actually would like to propose that somebody needs to review this and actually allow, not allow CPV to actually have an alternate fuel. Uh, I still support the project, I think, because I haven't seen any sampling under the gas, uh, the propane or the natural gas. But I don't think they should even be allowed to operate with that low sulfur diesel alternate fuel. If it, something goes wrong, plant shut down. The one thing that uh, everyone's talking about, you know, corruption and investigation, but I think everyone's lost the point. The New York State government administration for years and years and years has been so intent on the closure of Indian Point, knowing that, I mean, I think Indian Point provides, uh, provides about a one third of the, of the energy to operate our area in New York City, maybe even more. But I don't think it's coincidental that at the same time CPV is being developed, the 
the New York State government is pushing so hard to close Indian Point. And I think they were looking to create this just to close the gap. And I'm not sure there were any irregularities there also that need to be investigated. Pardon me for your email. Just really quickly, obviously, it goes without saying I'm not a lawyer, but I think what we're doing with this as a resolution is we're not passing the legislation. We're giving our recommendation to state bodies. It's up to them and their attorneys to say, well, we can go 80% of the way or we can go 90% of the way. If they think it's kind of unconstitutional to use the word retroact, then they won't put it in the law. I don't think we're getting involved. We think that's important. But let's just let them make a decision. This is a resolution. It goes to the state. Let them make it. I don't think we should be fighting on this one. I support it. Okay. Legislator Menuda, then Legislator Sierra. Oh, Briscavich, I'm sorry. Let Briscavich go first. I missed him before. Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, this is, I know this is a memorialization and whatever we do isn't legally binding. So whatever they decide to do with it, they will do with it. Despite how we all may feel about the CPP project, I think we can all agree the way that they conducted the preliminary test was horrible. Absolutely terrible. They did it in every wrong way possible. They've created a lot of concerns amongst our constituents. We've heard those concerns. Our constituents are asking us to pass those concerns up to the state. And we all know that not only with the environmental aspects, but the corruption aspect as well. We all know there's a lot of corruption up there in Albany. And that onus doesn't lay with just the legislature or the governor. It lies with all of them. And I think we need to send that message up. Thank you. Thank you. Legislator Menuda. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. With respect to this, I will be voting in favor of. I wanted to address the issues of permitting and retroactivity. I am not an attorney, but in practice, I will tell you that permits are constantly being provided and constantly suspended or pulled. Also, regarding retroactivity, when it comes to safety, the New York State Building Code alone has two retroactive laws. One is smoke detectors and CO detectors in homes. And the other one is swimming pool passes. So I don't see an issue with this being a retroactive problem. Thank you. Legislator Sierra. Thank you. I must agree with Mr. Chairman. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Chancellor and Assembly Bill number 3398, Larry Sloan. Second. Discussion? Majority Leader Pinelli? All Republicans?
Okay, so certainly I, sh I can assure you that children's safety is clearly a wholehearted issue that I support. But what I'm surprised about is how we have approached this issue. And I think we've done it pretty prematurely in many ways. Uh, although if we've done differently, I think I might want to support it. Let me just point. We have had, had no discussion of public safety rules regarding any cost, root cause analysis of this, of this issue. We're told that the, the uh, the police tax force have had looked at a number of issues, but we didn't. We don't know what they found. We haven't seen the reports. We don't know is the root cause really going to be solved by putting a police officer. It may or may not be. I don't know why we don't. We haven't done a fiscal analysis, and finally, we haven't done a gap analysis in terms of our school district. What school district probably do a good job? Which one need to help? Do they need this? In my 20 years in this legislature, I've, I've seen this happen before where we've taken quick action because of public outcry and something without thinking it through. I think this is just another example. I think if we think it through, we'd get it done right. A few years ago, many of us in this body remember when the Connecticut horrific shooting happened. We quickly ran with, what, to, the, to the table with $500,000 to give to our school districts, which we had no idea what the needs were. We didn't know what they were going to do with it, just apply for it, and we got money. It was a good idea, but I don't know that we really thought through it was the best. We come back to this issue, we know not much about the other alternatives that Commissioner Casey's going to offer to us. I think we should look at all of them. Uh, in the Rules Committee, I asked, the, I asked the, the chairman, did we have the New York State Sheriff's Association who recommended this? Did we have any data from them on how much this would cost the state of New York to do? The answer was definitely silent. We don't know. And we all know how, how, how loyal the state is in honoring their commitment to money, just ask the community college and see what happens when they promise to pay a third, a third, a third, and then they stop paying. Or when they decide Medicaid is run out of a muck on this and they're going to take money out of something else. Let's know how much it's going to cost first. We didn't do that. When I asked Sheriff Du Bois how much did it cost Orange County, his answer was, well, maybe $30,000 per person per school. A rough estimate, someone said, and I don't have the numbers exact, or 200 potentially schools, middle schools, and I can put it out of elementary middle level. Well, that's at 30,000, that's $6 million in Orange County. And we're going to be asking the taxpayers of the state of New York to pay, when in fact the tax, taxpayers of the school district might be doing it already. I think a lot of things is quite premature, and, and I'm not sure that this is the right way to go. A few weeks ago, I, and I, I really was impressed with, with this, and I want to take a moment to say it. Um, my new article in the Times Herald Record by, by Gerald Jacobowitz regarding opiates. I thought it was very well written if some of you read that. What struck me was a quote that what he said, and I want to quote it, because I think it applies to us here. He said, let's sit and talk about this issue, opiates, or about the police and schools. What is the problem? What are the possible solutions, he said? Are political leaders too hesitant to do that because they think they will be objects of derision? opposition, criticism, and defeat in the next election. Let me remind you, he said, that the oath of office that we all took had nothing about guaranteeing re-election. So let's follow his advice. Let's spend some time thinking about this. I'm sure my, word, my words will be as deaf in your ears as nothing because I'm sure they've been passed. But think about what we're voting. We're voting for a lot of money to be spent by the state, and maybe our local school districts, without even knowing how much it is or whether that will affect anything. So I, I, I'm not going to vote for it because I think this is not the way to help our children. There's probably better ways to do it. Thank you, Senator O'Donnell, and Fagione, and Hines, and Sierra, and Maria, and Ted. Who, John? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So last year, we voted $250,000 to do something immediate on school safety, and that was just to hook up our existing school cameras to our 911 system. Florida, uh, Parkland incident changed all of that, okay? So the only thing that's gonna stop deadly physical force in a school building is deadly physical force. So you're gonna see, in those incidents already happened, you're gonna see a police officer in every school building, regardless of the cost. You cannot put a cost on protecting our children. You're also going to see a single point of entry. You're going to see magnetometers. You're going to see eventually bulletproof glass. You're going to see uh, numerous recommendations. Those are the obvious ones. 
coming out of Washington, coming out of Albany. So for this uh, resolution to request that the state pick up the tab for putting a police officer in every school building is paramount to protecting our children because you're going to have other school incidents. Uh, at one school incident, the person, that, the criminal that did the uh, shooting saw a police officer and went to a different school that didn't have a police officer. This is uh, really uh, a step that should have been taken a while ago. Uh, Florida happened, now everybody, uh, thanks to the children down there and uh, being on Time Magazine, being on every uh, uh, TV and radio show, doing their march, but the quicker we can get police officers into schools, the quicker our children will be protected. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Legislator O'Donnell. Thank you, Legislator uh, Engel, for your uh, points there. And no doubt, when we talk about costs, that should be something that should be discussed. I would just ask this body to consider this. Just moments ago, we had students here debating issues in the Youth and Government Day. And the security that those students had to go through to get into this building should be equal to what they have to do to get into the school buildings throughout Orange County. They all had to go through a magnetometer downstairs. There are plenty of law enforcement officials in this building keeping this building safe. I ask that we would consider doing the same for the buildings in which those students learn each and every day. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, with respect to this, I say enough. We have had enough deaths. We have enough instances where this has happened. This should have been happening in our schools for protection of our students a decade ago. We started doing protection and, and hardened vestibules, but there is no guidance from the state. There's no guidance from anyone as to how hardened they should be. So what do they do? They put up chipboard walls that you can simply kick through, a couple of doors. It's insane. Our security in our schools is paramount. And it doesn't matter the cost. What is the cost of our children's lives? That's the bottom line. We, we looked at 9-11 when that occurred. Nobody looked at the cost. We, we put together Homeland Security, which by the way, maybe they should be participating in this. But as the end of the day, the state, Homeland Security, or federal government, because this is a national issue, should be promoting this. We keep everyone safe and all of our major institutions except our schools through properly trained individuals who are armed. It's enough and it's time we start doing this, moving this forward, not asking our teachers to do even more than they already do. They're not trained in that. We need to have the professionals there that can protect our children, protect our staff, and protect our schools. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you, Legislator Nemo and the other legislators. First, I want to say I, I'm a firm supporter of this. However, I do share Legislator Nemo's concerns. Um, I'm not the one who wants to go and rush in and make a decision very hastily. And to Mr. Manu, Legislator Manu's point, yes, we did do that uh, after 9 11, but in many instances, we made a lot of poor decisions after 9 11 as well. And so I caution us, the uh, legislators, that we need to you know, think about what's, what's the the overlying causes that are to this problem. You know, we're seeing thousands, hundreds of thousands of people marching. And I just, I, I think that it's just so important for us to really be listening to all those concerns. One of the things that I mentioned in committee was, with this officer, is this officer going to have the training um, to work in schools? And that to me is a really important thing, because I'm, I'm looking at some of the statistics that show that unfortunately, in some cases where we have officers in schools, we see um, escalation uh, of arrests. You know, for situations that could be handled in in house, that is a concern for me. I want to make sure that these officers that are going to be going to our schools have the training to to be in, in a, to be in schools. Just like you have you have police officers that are for SWAT. Just like you have uh, officers that are crisis intervention trained police officers. They have a, a, a skill set which is unique to their to their um, to their job. Working in a school working in a school is no different. If you're working with people, I just want to make sure that whatever we're having in schools that those individuals, those police officers, are going to have the skill set to work with youth so that we don't have any accidental uh, cases um, which we, we would all be regretting down the line. Um, nevertheless, I will be supporting this bill, but I do caution that you know we, we do really need to have a discussion about this. Thank you. Which Sierra, the Legislator Hines. 
Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I was part of this discussion on the Public Safety Committee. Um, I did bring up the uh, language was changed from uh, SRO to police officer. Um, if it was my choice, I'd rather an SRO in schools. Um, they're trained specifically to deal with students. They go, undergo a different type of training to deal with students. I brought that issue up. But if I had the choice between an SRO, police officer, or a security guard, I will go with at least a police officer in the schools. I did attend a council meeting in Middletown uh, earlier in the week. A council member did make a point that uh, when you travel on an airplane, you can't take a bottle of water on an airplane. But they allowed almost anyone to walk into our schools. I do believe that our children are our most valuable asset. Um, with ever program we can take, whatever steps we can take to protect our children, to protect our assets, I'm all in. Um, I know the state had an SRO program several years ago. They did pull the funding. Middletown was one of the first districts to have an SRO program. I spoke to the chief in Middletown. I spoke to the SRO officers in Middletown. It was very successful. Um, SROs undergo a higher level of training to deal with students, to deal with bullying issues, to deal with the problems before they become an issue, before it becomes a tragedy. And uh, I'm, I'm upset that the resolution took out the SRO component, but I, I will support this resolution. Um, if, you, if you tell me that you're going to raise my taxes to protect our, st our students, to protect our kids, I'm all in. I'll line up, raise my taxes, raise them to protect our children. Um, I believe that most of us in here are parents, and like I said, there are most valuable asset. So whatever measure comes before us, I will fully support. Thank you. Okay, Legislator Hines, then Ms. Kedich. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I agree with everybody who spoke so far. Uh, but as you know, I sit on the police advisory board. Uh, the Commissioner Casey had a meeting with all the school superintendents this week, and uh, the position of the police advisory board was embraced by almost every superintendent. Uh, it's our goal to have uh, the schools decide who will be the officers not uh, the sheriff's office or the local municipality where they openly work for uh, because the police advisory board felt that community members that are retired police officers would probably make the best individuals so that uh, they, they had an interest in the school. It wasn't that they would work in, say, Middletown one day, Cornwall the next day. It was, no, that's your school. That's where you work. Uh, with respect to the numbers, the cheapest way to do it would be to have retired police officers working within the cap of the $30,000 that they're allowed to make as retired police officers. And the police advisory board determined that it would take two officers to man these, each school, two. Uh, the best idea they came up with was in three uh, days one week and two days the following week. So if you're a police officer assigned to that school, you might work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, one week, and then Thursday, Friday, the following week. That would be able to cover the year, the school year, and still have police protection. Uh, the reason that they went away from the SROs, although they do uh, like the SROs, the police advisory board, is they, the SROs would typically walk throughout the school and interact with the children in various locations, maybe even teach some safety classes. The police advisory board felt that the uh, armed officer had to be at the single point of entry at all times. In other words, if someone's going to come into that school, if they typically go, through the front door with the gun, and that's where the police officer would have to be to neutralize that suspect as soon as possible. Are you going to solve everything? No, but you may mitigate the, the amount of people that get attacked. Uh, with respect to the 250,000, there's a resolution of, uh, also on the agenda today. The uh, mutual link system is a system that uh, the 911 uh, staff likes. It can uh, link every camera to our 911 center via the internet, so the cost is not uh, extravagant. And it can be controlled by the schools where you push a button and give the 911 center access to your cameras and not before that. So there's nobody monitoring it. The school superintendents were very appreciative of that. And no police are going to be monitoring their cameras unless they give them access. And the, the position would be that if the school hit that button to link us to the 911 center, then it would be a disaster that you'd be seeing on the news that someone brought a gun to a school and it was a significant event. It wasn't something like, uh, you know, two kids were fighting in the school. It's not something. We're interested, that's the school's issue. So the police advisory board does have a white paper to the county executive. It will be, I guess I'll make sure everybody has it this afternoon. The county attorney didn't want it released right away because they wanted to present it to the schools 
first and get the schools uh, to buy into the position. So there has been a lot of work done on it, but the, the school, uh, police advisory board is made up of the sheriff's office, the state police, various town police chiefs and village police chiefs, as well as city police chiefs, and we perceive them to be the experts. I sit on the committee as well. I don't claim to be an expert, but I certainly listen, and it was the position of all those experts that an armed officer has to be at the single point of entry uh, to fully protect uh, the children. Uh, the cost, it, it, well, I agree with Mr. Ramo, I don't think the state's going to send us a check, and you know, it's just not going to happen. It's right now, it's going to be the burden of the individual school districts, and most of them uh, are very interested in doing that because the school districts work for the taxpayers uh, who send their kids there. No one, uh, let's, let's, let's say Sierra just said, is going to object if their taxes going up to protect their kids. Uh, this is a start in the right direction. I also think we need to take the safety issue out of the 2% tax cap because the schools, just in my district in Cornwall, would be an extra $300,000 to support those schools. With that retired program that we have, they could also supplement it with the individual police could roam through. When the uh, individual police officer is on lunch, so to speak, they could assign an on-duty police officer to go to that school and rotate through. So there's, there's ways of doing it. But the individual schools will make the decision. It's local control. They'll decide who's there and what's best for them. I think that's the best program. Thank you. Thank you. Paul. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, again, this is a memorialization. Uh, I think we can have a lot of debate on whether we want uh, SROs or police officers or whatever. But I think the bottom line is we need armed security in our schools. Uh, we've secured our airports, we've secured our government buildings, we've secured, secured this building. Um, I know a lot of the school districts are already doing this on their own. Uh, both my children right now are sitting in their classrooms in Warwick Middle School where there is a Warwick police officer on site. Uh, I'm happy that they do have that protection and I want that same protection for all of our children. Thank you. You legislator Sutherland, legislator Benton, then looks uh, Thank you, Chairman. I just want to say that as a mom, um, I hate that I have to tell my kids every day when they go to school because Minnesota Saint does not have a police officer to always be aware of their surroundings and to not be a hero every day when they go to school. It's heartbreaking as a school social worker that when we have lockdowns, I have to talk to my students when they look at me and ask, what are you going to do if this is real Sutherland? And, and that they have to live in that kind of fear, and my colleagues as well. And as a legislator, I, I will always vote to do whatever is necessary to protect not only my children, but your children and everybody else's. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think the first duty of government is to protect its people. And right here now we're talking about protection of schools and children. So the officer, resource officer, whatever you want to call them, you know, the key there is uh, response time, at site as quick as possible. Uh, with adding of the 20 uh, bond resolution for number six and the video component, that's extra communication and clearer path is, you know, for recognition of what's actually happening and having the response time of the gentleman or woman uh, on duty there at the instant they're actually needed uh, is, is critical. But under the heading of sometimes you, I can't believe what I hear at this in this uh, legislative chamber. Someone is afraid that, you know, you might have extra arrests. If you deserve to be arrested, you should be arrested. That's plain and simple for me. I mean, we all know the PC crowd likes to under-report under crime statistics so they can show things uh, going down to traffic stops or, or, or whatever it is. And so, uh, again, I think everyone should just uh, support this because this is just one prong in protecting our children. Are you leader anymore? Very quickly, I, I, I welcome the debate. I wish you would have had it before. I think a number of the points are really good, and I welcome. I wait, can't wait to hear what the police advisory committee decides they tell the legislature after they tell the schools. I think I would have done it the other way. But I think that I think it's nice to vote for money, but I still want to hear it. But I just remind you that the, the issue is the root cause analysis. And that's really the issue. I, I understand the emotion of the fiscal issue. I, I understand how place to say I'm for safety in schools. I understand that. But do we really understand the root cause? Is it bullyism that's, that we could self-inflict that our school district is bringing people back to hurt us? Are we doing anything about that? But what are we? Is this really the gun in an officer's holster really stop all the root cause issues that are here? That's the debate we should have. 
I mean, I, I, you know, I'm yeah, I retired from the Office of Mental Health, and I'm a deputy at Mid Hudson Forensics Psychiatric Hospital. We had some of the baddest and bad in the lockdown area. And we had lots of contraband issues that came in, no matter how many guns we had. We had people throwing stuff over the fence, knives and stuff over the fence, give to their to someone inside so they could break out. It just, it goes on and on. There are many, many other ways other than, we may stop shooting because you're not going to bring a dog gun in the front of the door. Are we going to stop somebody bringing a bottle of water that's full of poison? Are we going to bring something else in? We need to think about it. I'm not against it. I really believe it like you do. But I think that we need to think about this. Thanks, Larry. I'm done. One of the other recommendations I made when I was down in Washington was uh, greeters and to identify the kids that are left alone uh, when they're eating lunch or have already identified as loners and to rotate them into being greeters at every school, whether it's one student or two students with an administrator. The example I gave was uh, the Newburgh Armory Unity Center. Every morning we have, uh, every Saturday morning we have over 400 students there. Uh, Mr. Kaplan or myself, we greet every child that comes through that door, shake their hand, look them in the eye, tell them, have a good day today, enjoy the uh, uh, programs you're going to be involved in. And in the seven years of uh, that program, we have never, ever had to separate two children. Okay, they come to that building, they're welcome, they get their hand shaken every morning look them in the eye and tell them to have a good day. Uh, we have to do something like that at the school district level also. Have greeters, rotate the greeters, and that's a recommendation. So we are also addressing the root cause of this problem. Thank you. Okay, roll call. Nelly? Yes. Badu? Yes. Emo? No. Anagnostakis? Yes. Ben? Yes. Fagione? Yes. Hines? Yes. Kulasek? Luhan? Yes. Menuda? Yes. O'Donnell? Yes. Ruskevich? Yes. Sierra? Sutherland? Yes. Fotel? Yes. Chewy? Yes. Bureau? Yes. Fresh? Yes. 17 eyes, one no. Okay, number five, we draw number six. Legislators Fernando, Luhan, Fedgion, Sassy, Benton, Hines, O'Donnell. On resolution dated April 6, 2018. On resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing preparation of surveys, preliminary and detailed plans, specifications and estimates necessary for communications linked between various school districts within Orange, Co Orange County and the Emergency Services Center, 911, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 25000 appropriating the set amount therefore and authorizing the issuance of 20 Excuse me, 25,000 bonds of the county to pay the cost thereof. Okay. Discussion? <coughs> yes, the majority. Vanelli okay. added, yes, certainly. Like Sierra added, Tui added, Anuda added, Kevin Derry added, uh, Sutherland added. Okay, roll call. Vanelli? Yes. Padu? Yes. Ingle? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Fagione, Hines, Pulisic, Luhan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, I'm sorry, Sierra, Sutherland, Chartel, Chewy, Vero, Russia. 18 eyes. Okay, number seven. Legislators Fernando, Fagione, Benton, and Padu. Resolution authorizing the Orange County Department of Emergency Services Police Services to transfer funds from the general fund to restore alive at 25 revenue, pursuant to section 4.10 of the Orange County Charter. Okay. Discussion? Roll call. Vanilla? Yes. Padu? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Fagione? Hines? Pulisic? Luhan? Minuta? O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sierra, Sutherland, Tartel, Chewy, Vera, Fresher, 18 eyes. Okay, number eight. Legislators Fernando, Luhan, Benton, Pulsack. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Emergency Services 
to accept and appropriate a one-time upfront payment from the Metropolitan Transportation Authority pursuant to Section 99-H of General Municipal Law and Section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Right. 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 Do we add? Okay, roll call. Finale? Yes. Duke? Yes. Amo? Yep. And Agnesakis? Benton? Fagion? Hines? Fulisek? Lujan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Riskevich? Sierra? Sutherland? Tortell? Tui? Vera? Fresh? ET Nights. Number nine? Legislators to Nando Lujan, Benton, Pulisac. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Emergency Services to accept and appropriate funds from the Metropolitan Transportation Authority pursuant to Section 99-H of the General Municipal Law and Section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Yes, Fagione added. Okay. Sierra added, do we added? Roll call. Finale? Yes. Could you? Yes. Emo? Yes. Magnostakis? Benton? Fagione? Hines? Pulisek? Luhan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Riskevich? Sierra? Sutherland? Tortell? Chewy? Vera? Brescia? 18 eyes. Okay, number 10. Legislators Fagione, Vera, Benton, O'Donnell. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Emergency Services to accept and appropriate grant funds from the New York State Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Services pursuant to Section 99-H of General Municipal Law and Section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Pulisic added. Uh, Lujan added. Tui added. Tocqueville added. Sutherland added. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Kajuk? Yes. Emo? Yes. Magnostakis? Benton? Fagione? Hines? Pulisic? Lujan? Menuda, O'Donnell, Riskevich, Sierra, Sutherland, Tortell, Chewy, Vera, Brescia, ET Nice. Okay, number 11. Legislative Spagione and Sananga. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County District Attorney's Office to accept and appropriate grant funds from the New York State Division of Criminal Justice Services pursuant to Section 99-H of the General Municipal Law and Section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Discussion? Duke added. Roll call. Uh, Sierra added too, I'm sorry. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Duke? Yes. Amo? Yep. Anacostakis? Benton? Fagione? Hines? Pulisic? Luhan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Riskevich? Sierra? Sutherland? Tortell? Chewy? Vera? Brescia? 28. I'm sorry, 18. And number 12. Legislators Vero and Sananga. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Probation Department to accept funds from the New York State Division of Criminal Justice Services pursuant to Section 99-H of the General Municipal Law and Section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Roll call.
were appropriated by the, uh, the Beaver Dam Lake community just for this purpose to pay for the dam. It's their money. It's uh, no, there's no additional cost because they're using money that they already have in their pocket now to help pay for this. Everybody in the community knows about it. Uh, and with respect to 15 as well, uh, if we can cancel the public hearing, we can. Let's not slow this project down because there's another million dollar grant on the book for these people in that community. Thank you. Jordan Lee Bernelli. Bernelli added. Lisa Pluhan added. Uh, Chantel added. O'Donnell added. Is it Lujan or Lujan? Lujan, okay. Yes. Amo, yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Beggio, 
Hines, Fawcett, Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Riskevich, Sierra, Sutherland, Tartell, Tui, Vero, Fresha, 18 eyes. Page number 25. Legislator Sutherland and Agnostakis. Resolution establishing a petty cash fund for the Orange County Veterans Service Agency. Second. Discussion? Tui added, Tartell added, Lujan added, Menuda added, O'Donnell added. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Duke? Yes. Amo? Yes. And Agnes Tonkis? Benton? Feggio? Hines? Pulisic? Lujan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Riskevich? Sierra? Sutherland? Tortell? Tui? Vera? Gresham? 18 eyes. And number 26. Legislators in Agnostakis, Amo, O'Donnell, Sutherland, Tuby, Stenango, Sierra, Totel. Resolution reappointing members to the Board of Health of Orange County Health District, pursuant to sections 343 and 344 of the Public Health Law and section 7.04 of the Orange County Administrative Code. Second. Discussion? We'll call. Vanelli? Yes. Padu? Yes. Amo? Yes. Agnostakis, Benton, Bagion, Hines, Fawcett, Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Miscavige, Sierra, Sutherland, Tartell, Tui, Vero, Gresham, 18 eyes. Okay, 27 through 31 collectively, go for it. Ellie? Yes. Padu? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Ben? Benjamin? Hines? Fawcett? Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Riskevich, Sierra, Sutherland, Tortell, Tui, Vero, Fresh, 18 eyes. Okay, number 32. Legislators Tortell and Menuda. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Youth Bureau to accept and appropriate funds from the New York State Department of Health pursuant to section 99-H of the general municipal law and general and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Discussion. Luan added. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Padu? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnus Takis? Benton? Fegion? Hine? Forset? Luan? Menuda, O'Donnell, Riskevich, Sierra, Sutherland, Totel, Tui, Bureau, Fresh, 18 eyes. Okay, number 33. <coughs> Legislators Sananga, Sierra, Benton, and Sutherland. An act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to create senior network support specialists and associate account clerk 2 of the Orange County Department of General Services pursuant to section 2.02i of the Orange County Charter. Discussion? Benelli? Yes. Padu? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Fagione? Hines? Fawcett? Lujan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Riskevich? Sierra? Sutherland? Tortell? Tui? Vera? Gresham? 18 eyes. Okay, number 34. Legislators Fernanda and Tortell, an act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to create personnel assistant and receptionist Spanish English speaking at the Orange County Department of Human Resources, pursuant to section 2.02i of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Vero added, Lujan added, roll call. Benelli? Yes. Padu? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagastakis? Benton? Fagion? Hines? Fawcett? Lujan? Menuda? O'Donnell, Riskevich, Sierra, Sutherland, Tortell, Tui, Vera, Gresham. 18 eyes, Mr. Chairman, and the desk is clear. Okay, um, let's say anyone wants to say something in confession. Very quickly, uh, I, you know, this is something I sat going in 1A and we were talking about it, and I wasn't about to, to say anything, but as the Chairman mentioned, and, and I, want, I want to say it as well, I think it, instead of Larry's law, it should be Sherry's law. Um, Legislator Fagio. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, in, as we go about our day today, I know we had a, uh, a moment of silence before we started this meeting. I would ask that you all take a moment today 
and just reflect upon the passing of one of our members of the Board of Ethics. Fred Witt was a, uh, not only was he on the Board of Ethics, but he was a neighbor and a friend of mine. And sadly, his wife Sue had passed away just a couple of months ago. And he, uh, he passed away in the last couple of weeks. So in your moments today, just have a thought for Fred as he, uh, he was a great member of the Board of Ethics and not only just a, a, a generally good gentleman, but a neighbor and a friend. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Legislator Pagione. Let's have that moment of silence right now. Thank you. Uh, we do have two speakers signed up at the end here. And I'd like to say that I think we're open-minded with respect to the speakers. I know I have to be strict with the three-minute time rule at times, but uh, I will remind speakers that um, there are no, at any time, character assassinations allowed. Uh, you can speak freely on almost any issue you want to speak to after the, the session, or at the end of the session, rather. Um, but I will just remind you of that. So our first speaker is, as it Bill felt better, excuse me, regarding budgetary help. Thank you for letting me speak. It's Bill Fetter from the Newburgh area. Um, I was here last month for the, for the legislative meeting and said to say it's my first ever, um, but it was um, enlightening. Um, and I, no character assassination, I promise. Uh, but I was, I was really dismayed at the medicines that everybody uh, exhibited in their vote to take money from the NRA for the sheriff. Um, for, for a mere $3,000, $3,600 it was. Uh, doing a little bit of homework, the sheriff's budget is $20.4 million, if I'm correct. Um, and this $3,000 is less than two one hundredths of 1% of his budget. Um, and I, I don't understand the need for that, that $3,000 from the organization that facilitates and, and proposes or, or wants to see these violent assault rifles propagated throughout the country. Uh, you know, I understand that people have the right to defend themselves, but these instruments are not designed to protect yourself. They're designed for mass assault. And it, you know, it's interesting you're talking today about uh, protection from the schools and whatnot. By taking this money, I feel like you're supporting that effort of the NRA to propagate these, this, the distribution of these instruments. Uh, you, you used it, I, I had written down the word bail, supporting the police department, voting yes on this. But if you remember, there was a person in the audience that said, ask the taxpayers, we'll give you the $3,600. And how much is in the unassigned fund here, $51 million plus or minus, it's what posted online, could not $3,600 of $51 million be taken out of the public's money to, to make that difference of $3,600 to give these guys the ammunition they need? I, I don't think we need to politicize supporting the sheriff by supporting such an organization. So this isn't the menu for that, I don't think. So we appreciate the effort that in, you're, you're under demanding scrutiny here, and but search your conscience, please. Can you make a resolution or resolve to maybe withdraw this one, send it back to the NRA, and take it out of a, a fund that uh, that might be uh, more appropriate to support an organization that has to do with the county and not a national effort. Uh, it's funny you had the kids here today. I wish I had gotten to speak before then that you could have turned around and asked these kids how they feel about you giving money to the NRA, looking at all the protests that have been um, you know, going on nationwide in the recent past. Um, and maybe you still have contact with those kids. Maybe you can email them, ask them what they, how they feel about that. I'm sure they have no idea that you did that. This wasn't something that was published in the paper. Just search your conscience, please, and maybe resolve to uh, withdraw that money and send it back. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, Ben Weiss. I don't see a time here, so I'm just going to sit down. Was it 30 minutes? <coughs> Three minutes. Oh, three minutes. Okay. Um, <coughs> last month when I tried to come into this room, I was arrested. I was arrested after being caught meditating in an empty room by an officer.
office and completely understood the circumstances. He said, oh, okay, okay, just, just go back and wait in the hallway. The place closed, no big deal. Forty minutes later, after being observed for 40 minutes by the police, I tried to enter this room with a whole bunch of other people. I was singled out and called aside and told I had to leave. I said, what? What are you talking about? He said, look, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. I have orders from above. I said, well, tell me who to talk to. Who does want to do this? Let me talk to my accuser here. Oh, you can't. And at that point, the officer pointed to this chamber and said, he's in there running the meeting. So I figured, well, what, who, who's, who, who would give this order? Who has the authority to give this order? And for what? Because the officer who was there realized that this was a nothing. This was a, a fleck of dust. It just disappeared or would have disappeared. I, I would say that having been, been singled out like that, I believe that I was singled out like that because of problems that I've had in the past in this room and that that never would have been done to anyone else other than me. It was, it was a, like a bad dream. But I, I was handcuffed, I was taken to the police station, I was shackled to the benches for, for 90 minutes while they slowly did some paperwork or computer work. Disgusting. But like I said, that was a bad dream. But I want to talk about other people who were in that jail building who were not going through a bad dream for which they knew they were going to escape. I knew that this was going to be resolved the way it was finally by the DA saying, of course, this is an unwinnable case. This is ridiculous. I'm throwing it out. You wouldn't even look at it. It was so absurd. But I, so I was going to get off, and I knew I was going to get off. But there are a lot of people in that building who are going through not a bad dream, but a nightmare. And those are the people who you just accepted eight million bucks from. I'm talking about ICE detainees in there. You, you know, I, I don't have time to, to catalog the horrors committed by ICE. But you're concerned about dogs being abused, victims of rape, children being killed in school. That's all by aberrant individuals. It's certainly the first that all of our shared common values. It has nothing to do with public money funding those crimes. The crimes that are going on now in our name that we are paid for, not being paid by, is something where we're, we're taking in eight million bucks a year from ICE. That's nonsense. That's the net. If you look at the gross, it's way less than that. It's a couple of million bucks. And to me, what it is a couple of million bucks. And if you want, after they have to pay the expenses, and if you, if, if, if you think it's worth it to be involved in this pogrom that is beginning here in the United States, that is abusing people, that is causing suffering beyond anything you could imagine, unless you do some Google searching and read what's going on, how 97% of these people have committed no violent crimes whatsoever, how only 14% of them have legal representation while they're being held indefinitely in some kind of conference nightmare. So please stop, please stop, please stop bothering me, and please stop taking money from us. Thank you. Uh, I want to take a motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye.